while I then show you how to make the side dish with some uh, rainbow chart we're using. So I, I am like so excited to show you my rainbow chart. I'm so impressed. Rainbow chart grows like wildfire on the uh, towers and it's beautiful. And there's nothing more than looking at your tower and just seeing this beautiful vegetation growing. And I just have to show you how big it is. These are the leaves, okay? These are the stalks that we cut off because we're not gonna cook the stalks. We always cut these stalks off and use them in our salads like celery, but you can see on the inside, the chard grows from the inside. So you just harvest from the outside and it just keeps growing. So I'm gonna hand this to Rick to get rid of because, oh, he threw it out the window. So you can see how big and wonderful our chart is. We're so excited about having a recipe today with our rainbow chart. I like cooking rainbow because you can see the red inside of the leaves. Now, let's get back to our steak. I am going to move our cook chart out of the way and we are going to work on the steak here. And we got too many things here. Let's leave that up there, Rick. So we're going to take just, um, two tablespoons, four tablespoons of olive oil here. We're gonna add four tablespoons of finely chopped basil to it. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of garlic. If you want more, you can have more. Um, I, I have a daughter that would like triple that. We have, we like less garlic. So we just do it that way. I'm gonna hand you those. I'm so glad Rick's here to move things. So. We are having so much fun with our towers. Our vegetables are getting so big that we have decided to start some new seeds and pull off all that vegetation that is getting so large and start with some new seeds. We have never seen our towers grow like this before, like this big, and we're having trouble getting to uh, some of our vegetables because they're so big. So we're going to pull some of those vegetables and start with some new seeds just so the sun can get in there and get some of the other things going. Well, this looks really, really nice. All I did was mix this together, as you can see, and then we're going to do a little bit on each side of the steak. Hmm. What are we turning that steak with? Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. Rick's going to use... Oh. I did not tell you, look at how beautiful, oh, it's a little wimpy right now because it's been out of, out of water, but it, our basil is beautiful this year. Okay, so we're gonna do just a little bit on the steak here. Just, you know what? Can you go ahead and flip it. I don't wanna use the, that spoon again. Guys, be careful, cross-contamination is very important. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a clean spoon out for what I was going to use this spoon for. Yeah. So now he's going to put that right on the grill and cook it. We are going to save the rest of the basil for when he is done cooking. So I'm just going to kind of set that aside and I'm going to put these spoons to the side so because this has uh, uh, the meat juice on it. Be very careful cross-contamination, guys. You don't want to be doing cross-contamination on anything. So I am going to start working with the chard. And this has been very, very easy to do. All we did is we pulled the chard. We cut the stems down because they were so long. We will continue to keep the, those stems. One, you can chop them up, put them in the freezer. They're ready to go in any kind of soup you want to add. If you're cooking a soup, a stew, whatever, you can add those in just like you would celery. In addition to celery, you don't have to not add celery, but that would add in a whole nother level of flavor. So we have Rick outside putting the steak on the grill. It's going to cook up really, really fast. And while he's doing that, um, I'm just going to show you how we cook the chard because we redid one. We have um, here a couple um, uh, cloves of garlic. And what he did is he sliced some for me. Rick did my prep for me today. Um, you just slice them. And then we took um, a fourth a cup of olive oil. We did a fourth a teaspoon of red pepper. Now we cut that in half because we don't want it as spicy. You can add the full half a teaspoon. We did some salt and pepper, like about, a, uh, what's about a half, a fourth a cup? Not a cup, a teaspoon. Sorry, guys. Let me look. Oh, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then you add some pepper. And then we're going to just put, pour this onto 
We found out that we should have only put half of the oil on last time. So I'm going to just kind of drizzle half of this oil on here. And then here's the key. We're going to sit here and we're going to just massage this oil in. That's all we're going to do. You're going to get this all into all of the kale um, chard. The recipe also says you can use kale. Now that I made that mistake saying kale. Okay, so I'm just going to cover all of this because you know what's going to happen? Rick is going to, when he's done cooking that steak, he's going to come in and get this. And he is going to just go right out into the grill and put this on top of the grill. See how you just massage it in there. I do have one of these stems I have to cut down because I had the roots on there to show you guys. Now, why are we eating so much chard, guys? Well, one, it grows fantastic on the tower. I'm not going to, we've said that before, but did you know that any dark green leafy vegetable is like so nutrient dense, it's like as good as, almost as good as um, kale. That's why I kept saying kale, because I wanted to bring that up. The, okay, so kale is the king of dark greens. We know that. But the chard is equally impressive because it is so nutrient dense. So it has um, one serving is going to give you your daily needs of vitamin K, which is so important for your bones. And it packs a hearty dose of vitamins A and vitamin C and magnesium. So you know what's more impressive about kale? Is it is very low in calories, and we love that. So you and it has your good source of iron, copper, potassium, calcium, and vitamin E. How wonderful is that? Okay, so you see, I cut this was what grew out of the tower, so I wanted to cut that off. I had it on there to show you, so we don't want to be eating that. So this is all ready for Rick to put on the grill, and he's probably almost done with the meat out there because when you do steak you have to do a little bit on each side how close is our steak rick three minutes to go guys so i am going to also since he has th three minutes to go i'm going to share some more things with you because i have to show you what i did for our demonstration um last week so when you're growing on the tower and you grow flowers in your backyard, I put together this beautiful, beautiful uh, vase of flowers here. And what I have hanging out is parsley. I use fresh basil. I have celery back here and all these greens. And then I cut flowers and arrange them around in my display. So I had to do a presentation and I took this and put it on the middle of the table and people thought it was beautiful. It just looks like a wildflower arrangement that you would have gotten at anywhere. You know, if you're running around cooking and that, then you can um, have this beautiful vase when you serve your food. Rick, do you need a clean plate out there for the... Okay, so I was asking him if he had a clean plate for the um, meat. You do not want to use the same plate that the raw meat was on. You guys probably know this, but this time of year, we can't stress that enough. If you cross contaminate, everybody's gonna get food poisoning and that's the last thing you want. So he is getting ready to pull that steak off, I believe. I can't quite see the grill from here. So now I wanna to talk to you about who donated this meat for us. The, this is the nicest people. It's called Meet Your Kitchen. They um. They are just like wonderful people to work with. They will deliver the meat to you if you're within their um, delivery radius. If And there, we have a special code that you can get. We'll post that um, on the website when, or on Facebook when we're done. But they'll give you a $5 off on your first coupon. But they have the best meat. They, they are the ones supplying our meat. Um, this steak that they brought over was fantabulous looking, as you saw, and they are, you can order online, meetyourkitchen.com, fantastic people. So you might want to connect up with them, especially if you're in the St. Louis area, because they are wonderful people to work with. You can order everything online and their meat is really, really good. So, um, now the next thing I want to share with you is all the vegetables we are getting off of our towers. So 
We have a humongous bowl. We have the zucchini and summer squash is growing like crazy. But guys, I think I'm up to about five pumpkins now that have shown up and they have warts all over them. They are tucked right in the corner there. And then I have a whole nother sugar pie pumpkins for making pumpkin pie is scrolled all the way up that wall and he is turning bright red. I have spaghetti squash, acorn squash, little yellow thing back there was acorn squash and tomatoes galore. I cannot tell you, we, we planted so many different types of tomatoes because we wanted to try them and they are so heavy. And when we get tomatoes, man, we're gonna have to do some real good cooking shows on what to do with those tomatoes. So I think Rick is starting to pull that meat off the grill and bring that in. I think he's afraid to bring in a rare steak here because he doesn't like the blood. But anyway, back to the tower. We have so many vegetables that we're going to, like I said, we're going to start harvesting and add new fresh seeds and try some different type things up there because we have enough chart up there that we can share with the neighbors and we can make some and freeze it. And we are really excited about all that. Uh Oh, here comes the meat. Look at that. Wow. He cooked it to medium, guys. So what we're going to do now is we, we're going to take this. There's our basil. And remember, Rick got me a fresh spoon here. And you just serve it with more of the sauce on it. I like it just like that. Look at that. It's good. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful that looks. Gar <laughs> Garlic and basil with your steak with the olive oil. Oh my gosh, look at that, Rick. Okay, now here's the best part. We already did some kale, which you saw in the picture. Our char I keep calling it kale, I apologize. When it gets really dark like this, it looked like kale to me. I'm going to move this over to the counter bed because he's going to throw that on when we're done and we're going to have double recipes going here because we'll be able to eat really good this week. What do you want to try first? He's going for the steak. Oh, I thought for sure he was going to go for the chard. Look at him go. Wow. So while he's doing that, let's give a shout out to our cameraman here, guys. Um, Catman Marketing, Manny, he's fantastic. If you guys need help, just let us know and we'll connect you guys up. Ho oh. ho! Good, very good. Okay, now you gotta try the other. You gotta have your greens, not just your protein. Okay, so something that's really important that I just learned is that if you eat a protein, you need to balance it with a carbohydrate, which would be a fruit, a vegetable, something so it all metabolizes in your system better. So I had a long chat with a nutritionist this week, last week, and that's what she taught me. You're like, I like that. okay, it's good together. really good together. That's why I did it. He's not sharing guys. You see this? He didn't even bring me a fork today to try anything. Stop right. eating. Got one for you. Okay. I, <laughs> I want to taste this so bad and he is not sharing. Okay. Oh, that meat is fantastic from Meet Your Kitchen. And the sauce on it's delicious. Wow. I'm going to be calling Meet it's Your Kitchen. really good. It does. Okay, he says it tastes really good. And I got to have my, my veggie with it. Okay, let's try this. I keep calling it kale because it's so dark green. Yeah. Oh, it's still crunchy. So the stem is crunchy. The leaves are soft. Mm. The grilled flavor is fantastic. Where is this recipe been that we've never tried this before? Guys, this is a slam dunk of a recipe. If you're looking for something to serve to your guests, I just got some red pepper. Sorry. Hold on. Mm. Anyway, this is a great recipe to serve your guests. I really like this one. Okay, so now, moving forward. Next week, who knows what we're going to cook because we're chock full of vegetables up there. And um, if you have any questions about the tower gardens, 
give us a call because it is not too late to plant a full garden right now outside. Or if you want to do lettuces inside, you can do that year round. So it is a perfect time to get a garden. So if you have questions, let me know. We are here to help you. Even if they're just questions, we'd love to answer questions. So um, next week, it will be a surprise vegetables because we have so many vegetables on the tower. And we will be here and you guys have a safe week. And don't forget to go to Meet Your Kitchen because meetyourkitchen.com. Check out their stuff. That steak's fabulous. And I'm going to have to get some to have here on hand because when you put that basil garlic sauce on top, wow, that was good. So meet your kitchen. Come back to Cooking with Nancy O next week. And questions about Tower Garden, just reach out to us. We are here for you. Have a safe, wonderful week. And until mm -hmm. next week, bye. Bye. I want another bite. Yeah. Minutes wow. the temperature we need it. It is so good. Nice and tender. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love this. Yeah. Okay. You ready to put the other chart on? Yep. Okay. Good deal. I'm taking